Hey there folks, so I'm firing up that uh, deck I was talking about in my article, and this is going to be it. It's a blood diamond kind of mid-rangey deck, and this seems like it'll get there just fine. I got two pieces of removal, I got two threats, and I got some resources. I think we're in good shape. We need one more diamond, but uh, you know, we'll uh, see how it goes here. So we're playing against a uh, champion that has the target troop, gets permanent flight, and that's pretty good for us because we are going to be removing troops and if he commits more to buffing them up by giving them flight and get more value out of our removal we're using the champion that draws us a card by paying two health with mid-range uh, sometimes it's it's nice to have a little extra gas if you're having a little trouble and uh, it's never a bad thing especially because we're aiming to have basically high quality troops that'll be very strong for us. Alright, so he's got the Ancestor Chosen, which could be a problem for us, but Living Totem in the long game should be able to outrace whatever he puts out, and that'll be good for us. He also might not draw anything for a little while, so that could be a dead card. We got Persecute, so now the question is, do we want to Persecute the guy? No, we want to get the Totem out sooner, start getting in for some damage. And really him him drawing a guy would be kind of bad for us. Um, him getting too many activations might not necessarily be good for the way we're running. We do have a little bit of trouble against Swarm because we don't have Extinction in here. With so many single target removal spells, I kind of felt like I didn't want to be playing Extinction. Might still be a good sideboard card though if we're playing against some sort of Swarm deck. With either this guy or the Pack Raptors or with... Uh, any kind of Shin here based deck. Now he's playing air superiority. Buff all of his guys who have flight, which isn't really all that bad for us. Now this turn, we probably would most like to draw a diamond resource, and we would just play this and swing with both. He has used all of his resources, so we don't have to worry about any tricks or anything. And we could start pumping Living Totem, but uh, I don't think it's all important. It's also very unlikely that he's going to block with it, so there's our diamond resource. Sometimes you live the dream, and that's the case here. It's totally possible that uh, he's running like counter magic now that that's added into the game. So we want to try to get our threats out earlier, which is what we're doing. We got both of them out, and hopefully he doesn't have like a buccaneer next turn, which would be kind of nasty for us. see what happens. Alright, so there's the first damage of the game. We've got him down to 18. Not too much further to go. What's nice here too with drawing that diamond resource is now I have one more blood in my hand which will let me draw another card next turn. And I have the two threshold I need for it too, so we're in good shape. Let's see what he plays. So any three defense guy that he plays is going to be kind of awkward because Persecute won't be able to kill it. But on the bright side, well, there's that Buccaneer, as I was expecting. Probably see the Cloud Knight get bounced. Yep. But, like I was saying, uh, if he was to play a 3 defense guy, it would go up to 4. Persecute couldn't get it, but we do have the Inner Conflict, so we're in good shape on that one. Alright, so he swings with his guy. Now we're probably going to replay the Cloud Knight next turn, but we're going to do it on our second main phase, so that way we can swing and threaten with the Living Totem. It's unlikely that he would block it, but if it does, we get some value there. So might as well leave the option open. Alright, so there's a Claw. Definitely a strong beater. Um, and it, that might even be a better play than Spearcliff, considering it's going to end the game a little bit quicker. But let's draw our card first and just make sure we have all of our options open. So another inner conflict. All right. So we're going to take our opponent down to 16 here. So the best play, though, I mean, we were talking about Claw versus Spearcliff. 
the reason I'm going to play Spear Cliff is it's going to use all of my resources this turn. So next turn, if I draw any other resource, I will have two open so I can still persecute something if I needed. Which is definitely going to be pretty good. He could give the Buccaneer Flight next turn, which would turn into a 3-3. At which point we would definitely use some removal on it. The fact that this ancestor's chosen is sitting out for so long is definitely not a good thing, especially with that air superiority. I probably should persecute that next turn rather than um, persecute the Buccaneer. I can always use inner conflict on him. So I guess what we're hoping for here is to draw a resource for our Clawed Mountain God, and that way we can do that plus persecute will be in strong shape. We definitely need to start getting some damage in. And he's still got five cards in his hand, which isn't all that pretty, but he's thinking here. And he's going to pass. Maybe he'll attack with the Buccaneer, try to trade. And maybe he's got like another Buccaneer in his hand. If I don't trade. That is kind of awkward that the Cloud Knight has Steadfast. I mean, you can use him to block. Um, but right now, for me, it's more important that I start getting damage through onto him. And so I am not going to block here. He also could have something like uh, that Sapphire Aura, which would definitely be pretty awkward for me. Because that would essentially give him plus two plus two to any of those guys. So we definitely didn't want to block there and have him play that. But with Persecute, we can... Uh, with the resources open for Persecute, we can start swinging in for there. All right, so Soul Marble is kind of a strange one of in the deck. It's actually a little bugged right now. I should have mentioned that in the article, but uh, we will go ahead and swing, and I'll talk about that in a second. So we're getting in for five damage here. I could Soul Marble and Persecute. He's got Sapphire Aura onto his guy. We will persecute that. So he's playing it before he declares blocks so that he can block my Pegasus. And because he's doing that, um, he's not going to actually be able to block my guy. Had he uh, declared blockers against my Living Totem and then Sapphire aura it, he wouldn't be taking the extra damage here. Um, but yeah, he really wanted to get rid of my Pegasus, or my Cloud Knight. And that was definitely a lot of value. I was planning on persecuting that probably this turn anyhow. We were talking about the Soul Marble play. And I might as well get Soul Marble out now since I'm not going to be using the resource on anything else. And we'll just activate it. We don't have... There's no one resource instance that we need to bluff or anything, so we'll just get it out of the way. And keep on moving in. So... So far, I, I, I don't know if this is a, one of the pre-con decks that comes with like just right when you start alpha. Um, if it, it does seem like it might be. I think it looks like the deck that was really similar from Gen Con. So maybe this is just one of his first games and stuff. Maybe, maybe I'm not playing against an optimized deck. But to be honest, a lot of the games have been going like this for me. This deck has done really well for me so far. Definitely seems like we'd have some trouble against decks where they're playing a lot of spell shield guys. Or decks that are not playing any troops. I haven't really seen too many non-troop decks, although I guess you could consider Demented Demolisher based decks non-troop decks, because he is really more of a spell than a troop. So we'd have kind of trouble with those, because all of our removal is just going to be dead for us. And so this turn he is hoping to block my guy. We're going to inner conflict it so that he doesn't have a Sapphire Aura um, rather than give like the Living Totem Flight or something, I don't want to get blown out there. There's another bug with Soul Marble is that it only says you have one counter. Right now I do only have one counter, but uh, I'm going to put two more on it. and It'll still say I only have one. It's just a display bug. It still keeps track of what you have. The other bug I was saying about Soul Marble is you get the choice between cavalry and armaments, and the armament's really good, especially for this deck that I'm running. I think it would actually be pretty strong for this uh, blue flight deck, too. We might be stuck. Um, let's see. 
Hopefully we're not. But uh. But uh, yeah. So the soul mar the armaments is really good. It gives all your guys plus two, plus two steadfast and spell shield, which is definitely pretty strong. Um, and he's saying GG. So yeah, that was game. I was going to be swinging in for five this turn. Uh, which would have taken down the six, and I would have swung in for six the following turn because I would have had a, a living totem pumped up, and so that would have been GG. But uh, yeah, that's the end. It looks like we we're bugged this round. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed seeing the deck in action. Generally, you're playing uh, a lot of strong creatures and ones that are hard to deal with or they're evasive, so you're poking in for damage. Meanwhile, you're dealing with all of their threats as they play them out, and that's pretty much how most of the games go. So let me know what you thought. Hope you enjoy it. Until next time, less fail, more function.